Greetings to another video. This is the final part of the six part video series Zwift for Beginners. And today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite, favorite things to do on Zwift, and that is racing. The races on Zwift, they're hard, but they are just so, so much fun. And I feel like the racing, I don't know, I think because of that competitiveness, it just pushes you way further than I think that you could ever go in, in like a free ride or a training session. The races themselves, there are so many different kinds. So you've got TTs, which are time trials. You've got hilly races. You've got flat races. You've got really long ones, really short ones, like pretty much any type of race that you want to do is gonna be on offer on Zwift. So I'm just gonna show you now how to actually find and filter and find which race you actually want to do. When you're on the companion app, go to the events tab and you're gonna filter out, you know, to find your perfect race. So click on filters, and then you can click on which type of ride you want to show up in the app. So I'm gonna select a race and time trial. So apply filters, and that is showing you now what is on today. So we've got three hour racing, team draft Monday race, three hour racing, Honestly, there are so, so many different ones to choose from. And so now I'm gonna click on one of these races and just show you what it will look like. So I'm gonna click on this EVOCC Sprint Race Series. So this is three laps, London Classic Reverse, it's 23.8 kilometers. And now we're gonna get onto the categories. So you've got A, B, C, and D. Sometimes you've also got an E, which is the women's only. So now we're gonna talk about the different categories and how to find which category you are gonna be for each race how to determine what your category is. So if you haven't done a race before, I would go back and look at say what your hour, like an hour on Zwift, what your average watts per kilo were for that hour. So just using easy numbers, if you are 50 kilograms and you found that your last hour ride was around 100 watts, that means you were riding at two watts per kilogram. And so you can then choose from the category which one you're gonna be in. So if it's two watts per kilo, you'd be in category D. What to expect in a Zwift race. They are so much fun, they are so painful, and you're gonna push, I think, harder than any other ride that you've ever done, but they are just so worthwhile because it helps build your fitness, it's great for community, and oh, they're just really, really good fun. I want to give you a couple of tips on how to, you know, do your first race and then how to progress and get better at Swift racing. So you can get into the pen 30 minutes before the event start time and I always think it's better to get in there early because you get a better spot so the later you leave it the further back you're going to be in that pen and also you've got that time then just to warm your legs up before the race just before you're setting off so I'd say between 10 and 15 seconds push down like ride pretty hard because the starts are always I don't know, I think people just get really excited and just push really hard at the start. And so you wanna be ready for that and then be able to keep with the pack. It's not gonna be that hard throughout the whole race, but the start, it is gonna be really tough. So just make sure you're ready for it. The next tip is know your power-up. So power-ups are a way in game that you are able to get a little bit of an advantage during a race. So power-ups are awarded when you go through the start or a finish. Uh, a KOM section, a sprint arch, and if you have unused power-ups as you pass through the arch, you don't get a new one, so it's important to make sure that you are using them when you get them. The power-ups will appear on the top left of the screen, and they're different icons to determine which power-up you've got. So I'm gonna go through them now. So you wanna make sure and understand you know what these mean, so you don't use them, I guess, in the wrong setting that is gonna affect your race. I did that once, and I'm gonna explain that at the end, and it just, I got dropped because I used the wrong power-up. Now let's go through each of the power-ups so that you understand what they are and how you can use them to your advantage in a race. So the lightweight, which is the feather icon, it reduces your weight by 10% for 15 seconds. So you wanna use this on climbs when weight matters the most. The draft boost, which is the van icon, this increases your draft effect by 50% for 30 seconds. And you wanna use this at higher speeds such as flats or descents and when you're already drafting off another rider. So this actually only helps when you're actually drafting somebody else. The aero boost, this is the helmet icon and this makes you more aerodynamic for 15 seconds. So again, you wanna use this at higher speeds when you're on the flat or you're descending. And especially when there isn't a draft available, 
even though it's still useful when drafting. The burrito, this is a burrito icon, and this turns off the draft effect for other riders within a 2.5 meter radius for 10 seconds. And this is for only when you're in an event. And you wanna use this when you're attacking off the front so opponents or other riders have to work harder to keep up with you. Cloaking, this is the ghost icon. This makes you invisible to other riders for 10 seconds and this is only available in an event. And this is a bit of a sneaky one. So if you wanna like push on and, you know, head off the front, you can do this, push hard, and then hopefully people that are riding with you won't see that you've pushed off the front. The steamroller, this is the steamroller icon. And this basically, flattens any surface that you're riding on to make it feel like you're, you know, on a road tire on smooth pavement. So if you're on like some, like a rickety bridge or if you're on dust or in dirt, if you press this when you're going over those, it will just make you go faster. Your rolling resistance will be faster. The anvil, this is the one I messed up using. And again, this is the anvil icon. This makes you 50 kilograms heavier for 30 seconds. So for example, using it when you are descending so you can go faster. I didn't know what this one meant. So I used it while I was climbing and I got dropped pretty quickly. So just use them wisely. Make sure you know what they are and when to use them. I'll leave a link actually. There's a really good article um, on Zwift Insider about all the different um, power-ups and when to use them. So how to actually activate a power-up once you've got it. You can either do it on the companion app, you just actually press the icon itself, or if you're on an iPad, just press it on the screen. Or if you've got a computer and a keyboard, just click the space bar. And the final tip is always have more water than you think you're gonna need. The amount of races that I have pushed so hard and just was really desperate for more water, just take more water and more snacks than you think you're gonna need. And I know it can be quite daunting like entering your first race, but honestly, just go and give it a go because it's one of my, like I say, one of my favorite things to do on Zwift. And I did have a, a season where I raced outdoors and I just, it just wasn't for me. Whereas I think racing on Zwift is just something just extra fun about it. If you're a little bit competitive, if you wanna push yourself, then I would definitely give racing a go. And there are so many um, different racing leagues. I mean, the main one is the Zwift Racing League. And that is phenomenal if you wanna get on a team and be able to race. And like that for community, again, is just phenomenal. So I'll leave some links below if you want to sign up to any of those. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, this is the last of the six parts with the beginner series. So I hope you found it helpful and useful and it's given you a little bit more confidence to actually get stuck into Zwift. But if you've got any other questions about Zwift or any other videos that you want me to make about riding on Zwift, leave them in the comments. I might potentially make like another video series maybe for like intermediate or advanced. So yeah, any of those questions, leave them in the comments and I will see you all next video. Also, what is going on with my hair? What what are they? Like little horns. Ugh.